Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, Joe Kuzma, and you know what, folks? Those of you who are new listeners, welcome. Those of you who are returning listeners, thank you for coming back and listening. Thank you for your feedback. I never get tired of saying welcome to the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma. It doesn't, it doesn't tire me out. It almost sounds like it's pre-recorded, but it's not. It's what I say all the time. However, I am tired of seeing and hearing and listening to some of the things that I'm seeing, hearing, and listening to all over the internet, social media in particular. Not the good stuff, not the good feedback, the bad feedback, the fire Mike Tomlin, fire Todd Haley. What did Todd Haley do, by the way? Was the Steelers' offense a problem against the Dallas Cowboys? Did Ben Roethlisberger complete passes, or did Todd Haley throw incompletions against Baltimore? What exactly did the Steelers do so wrong besides not having Ben Roethlisberger play against the New England Patriots? You're looking at a 4-5 and five team that's not out of this. You know what? Pete Carroll had a Seattle Seahawks team that went 7-9 and nine and won a miserable NFC West about five years ago and then even won their playoff game because by virtue of winning their division, they got a home game with a losing record, no less. I'm not going to say that's what's going to happen here, but it could still happen to be this way because this division, the AFC North, is just not good this year. And we're looking straight dead in the eye at an AFC North opponent on Sunday that everyone wants to crack jokes about. Fire Todd Haley because the offense is good. How about fire Keith Butler, Joey Porter, Carnell Lake, the defensive line coach, Mr. Mitchell, uh, Mitchell's first name it's escaping me right now. John, I believe. These guys, the defense. Oh, you know what? Get out of here. The defense wasn't exactly terrible. Someone is going to shoot me in the foot. Joe, what are you talking about? They gave up. Mike Tomlin said it in a press conference. He called it popcorn. Someone had to get him to clarify because it's the splash plays, the big plays. Big play to Des Bryant. A couple big plays to Ezekiel Elliott. They also had some opportunities where they stopped Dallas as well. You know what? That's the Dallas Cowboys. They're now 8-1, and one, top team in the NFC. This is the Cleveland Browns. Make jokes as you will, and we'll make plenty of them. But don't make jokes about the Steelers and Mike Tomlin and going on the road and having difficulty against sub-500 road teams because this team is point zero zero zero. This is quite possibly the worst football team that a Mike Tomlin coached Steelers unit will face on the road this Sunday in a short road trip to basically what amounts to a place that I've been to for the last six years straight and I will be at again that gets invaded by Steelers fans was that way for the end of the season last year and Trust me, the season's over for Browns fans already. They started fire sailing these tickets two, three weeks ago. There are going to be a huge contingent of Steelers fans here. They have a rookie quarterback in Cody Kessler if he plays, or are they going to cycle out and bring in this uh, what's his name Hogan, or are they going to have are they going to have Josh McCown in there as well? I'd actually prefer Josh McCown, even though he's a veteran. Kessler hasn't been throwing the too many interceptions. He's been accurate with the ball, six TDs, one pick, seven games. They don't throw a whole lot of touchdowns because they're terrible. We know Terrell Pryor had a long completion last year. You're probably thinking of that. Oh, Terrell Pryor's the leading receiver now. You want to make jokes. Uh, Steelers are bad on the road. This is the game where Pittsburgh gets back on track. I think we saw Ben Roethlisberger play his best football last week. And the best is yet to come. He is 100% healthy. The Browns did not. They had the luxury of not having to face Le'Veon Bell in not just one, but both of the games they faced the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. And then they even had D'Angelo Williams get hurt in that final game of the year. I think it was in the first half, maybe even in the first quarter. They've had the luxury of getting the Steelers sometimes when they're not at their best. 
One of the times they won in Pittsburgh was against Charlie Batch in a game where the Steelers turned the ball over seven times. Joe Hayden is back to a did not practice. This is just off the hot presses. Did not practice on Thursday. Full health that did not practice. Now, I don't know if that's some veteran thing, but usually you give the guy the day off on Wednesday. You give him the early day off as a veteran perk. I wonder if Joe Hayden's a little scared. I don't like calling out players, but you know what? Antonio Brown, has a he has abused Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden has never looked like a star corner in the NFL when paired up against, matched up, looking across the line on the other side of the field at number 84. A.B. Antonio Brown, who caught, what, 14 balls? I'm going to make some bold predictions. I, they're going to be on the website. Maybe by the time you hear this, it'll be there. And I'm thinking, man, I'm thinking Ben has a big game. I'm thinking Bell has a big game. Ben may only throw for one or two touchdowns, but I think A.B. still has his his usual this Steelers offense, I, I just don't see. Now, Ray Horton, he's a former he, – he comes off of the Dick LeBeau uh, learning tree there. He is a protege of that school of thought, just like Keith Butler. He knows the schemes very well. His defense, though, just lacks the talent, with the exception of who they traded for, Jamie Collins. But the Steelers' offensive line is one of the best in football. They are getting it done. David DeCastro rated one of the best best, I think the best at his position as well over this past week and throughout the season. These guys, they're ready to roll. Ladarius Green's back out there. We're going to see what happens. We don't know yet. Darius uh, Darius Hayward Bay doesn't look like he's going to be back yet anytime soon. Marcus Wheaton, I kind of highly doubt he's going to be back anytime soon as well. Sammy Coates, we learned, is also nursing with the hand. These guys are reloading, but in that meantime, Eli Rogers has stepped up. Kobe Hamilton has stepped up, and I just don't see anywhere where the Browns can cover any of these guys. And let's not forget that Lev Bell is the second-best receiver on this team, but the tight ends. Ladarius Green finally plays last week, gets three catches, 30 yards. Jesse James, oh, somewhere in the ballpark. I know he caught all four of his targets. He was in the ballpark of 40-plus. I do think the tight ends can also be – it could bust this thing wide open. Talking an awful lot about a bad Browns defense, but it's probably better in their offense. They do have a formidable running back, I will tell you. They have uh, Isaiah Crowell. He's not bad. Duke Johnson's been picking up some of the slack, too. But th- this offensive line is not the Great Wall of Dallas version 2, as we saw at Heinz Field last weekend. They will not be parting the sea for Ezekiel Elliott. And none of these backs, neither of these backs, are Ezekiel Elliott. This offensive line's banged up. And even though the Steelers, who have at the time of this recording, have yet to make a move officially for Cam Hayward or to call up Bud Dupree, the assumption would be that Bud Dupree, he's been getting the first team reps and he will be playing on Sunday. It's been seeing a lot of snaps. They're getting them ready and they got to make a roster move. We've made some predictions on some of that. Shabazz, one of the corners that's been off and on this roster. Mahalik, who's a backup tackle. He might actually be safe. A few others. Maybe uh, too much luxury at some of these positions. But LJ Fort, who was uh, cut and uh, brought right back to the practice squad and then called right back up as Steven Johnson goes to the IR. I don't know. They may, they may still be waiting on an opinion, but Cam Hayward, man, that looks very nasty. It's a big loss for the Steelers' defense. He's one of the most vocal guys in that locker room. He's a leader. He's a veteran, and he's disruptive up front. So what you're going to be looking at now is maybe some rotation of trying to find which guy can fulfill his role. Javon Hargrave, who they drafted specifically in mind as being a player that they could play on third downs and didn't have to be the prototypical nose tackle who – had to be pulled off the field, which is one of the reasons why they just passed on several other tackles that were out there. They feel they got their guy in the third round, a small college guy who's continuing to grow and feels he is light years past that first game in Washington on Monday Night Football, according to an interview done with him the other day. He's capable of playing end. I don't think he'll get the bulk of this workload, but he'll get a share. Maybe Ricardo Matthews, who was brought in from San Diego and looked pretty darn good in the preseason. And then, of course, Big Dan McCullers is going to have to stuff the middle when they do get to play that 3-4, which is only about a third of the time to begin with. Steelers working with five linebackers last weekend. 
and attempt to stop the run. They have linebackers that drop into coverage. The Browns do have a decent tight end in Gary Barnage, who may be a decent lineup. Sean, uh, Sean Davis may get some of that, uh, may get that role, may have to cover Barnage. And I think Sean Davis, aside from like the penalty, had a pretty darn good game. He had a nice stop there on a third and one. It forced Dallas to punt on one of the few third downs that Dallas did not convert. But once again, this is an 0-10 team. They have a rookie quarterback. He did complete 119 consecutive passes without an interception, the second longest streak by a Browns rookie. And he has some passing yards, a 95.7 passer rating, and et cetera, et cetera, over seven games. But they haven't exact, exactly played the, the strongest of talent either. And I'm not going to say the Steelers' defense is quite there yet, but there's a lot of inexperience, especially so now with Cam coming out. We see that Jarvis Jones has got a demotion. We've heard this before with Arthur Motes. This is part of the rotation, but I expect this is also part of Bud Dupree coming back. Jarvis Jones pretty much the scapegoat for that final touchdown that Ezekiel Elliott scored that won the game for the Cowboys last week. The defense, unfortunately, didn't make that stop. They didn't make some other stops. They gave up some big plays. It's some growing pains. We all wanted a first-round cornerback. I wrote about this with Artie Burns, and he's going to have some he's going to have some tremendous challenges ahead, but I think they're working on this, and they're going to allow Burns to stay on one side like they did on Sunday. They're going to allow Ross Cockrell, who's had a phenomenal year as a corner. Talk about a bargain. He's going to play on the other side. This is pretty much what you see with some corners in the NFL. Richard Sherman up in Seattle does the same thing and just covers one side of the field. So we'll see if the matchups are there or not and if the teams try to expose a rookie. This is part of the growing pains that you will have with playing rookies. And corner is a tough, or if not the toughest, one of the toughest positions. Of course, quarterback is too, but we're talking about the defense. You try and be a corner in this league, not commit pass interference, and still try to be able to make a play on the ball. Very difficult to do. We've seen William Gay get torched out there a couple times this year as well, so it's not just Artie Burns. Certainly capable. It's going to be a learning experience. Same with Sean Davis. Same with Javon Hargrave. You've got Anthony Chikillo out there. He's a second-year player as well. Now you're going to put Bud Dupree out there, who hasn't played half of this year and is a second-year player also. Ryan Chazier, how much time had he missed over the last few seasons, as well as even Jarvis Jones, who gets the criticism, how much time had he missed? So there is there is some leadership and some just consistency problems, and a lot of that has to do with the youth. And I think if they could get through this, move forward, go to Indianapolis, get this ball rolling, guys. Now, Indianapolis, that might be a challenge, but Indianapolis is not exactly having the most stellar year, and I'll talk about that once we get beyond this game and head into next week. But the the schedule, the strength of the schedule, certainly favors the Pittsburgh Steelers at this point. They are a team that is capable, defensive woes or not. If the offense can keep it up like they can, I don't see a whole lot of offenses on this schedule, on this remaining schedule, or even heading into the postseason for that matter, to teams that could make the postseason. That would be very problematic for this Steelers defense. It makes you wonder how far they, they fell because the last time they were in Cleveland, seven sacks. It's not too long ago. First of the year. I think it was January 3rd, if I remember correctly, of this year. Rosters turn over a little bit. Of course, Cam Hayward won't be there now. They had Bud Dupree at that point. Will Allen was a fixture. He's no longer there. You have Sean Davis. who's I mentioned the guys that are new. I'm not going to go through it again, but I think you guys get to see the point. So... Browns have given up. Cody Kessler has been sacked 15 times. Browns have given up 30 total to the six players that have thrown a pass on this team this year. Six. It's almost like a running joke up in Cleveland, but this is about the worst. They have not won a game since Johnny Manziel was their quarterback last season. That was the last guy who won a game playing quarterback in a Browns uniform. They've even been so desperate that their leading wide receiver, Terrell Pryor, who wasn't, who was out of football, picked up Project and has become their number one wide receiver. Now, he's been pretty sharp, and he's been reliable. He's caught at least three passes in every game, a few more here or there, had a big game, uh, one, I think, with two scores. They have uh, they have Coleman, who they drafted this year as well. They have a few guys out there. 
I'm not going to say that another professional football team won't be competitive, but I just think that the talent that the Pittsburgh Steelers have must overshadow and overcome here. And if they're not PO'd, if this isn't under their skin, losing four in a row, then okay, I'm with you guys. They they drop this one. I mean, stick a fork in it. I'm going to join you. Somebody somebody hold a torch for me or just save one on the side and be ready to light it after Sunday if this happens. But there's a there's just too much football left. And I just don't think if you mentioned that Mike Tomlin has gone 6 and 2 over the last 8 games of the last 3 seasons and 6 times overall in his 9 seasons as a head coach, if he were to go 6 and 2 again, you've got the one loss against the top team in the NFC. And looking ahead, that could come from within the division. I just don't see it coming from an 0-10 Browns team. Also consider the teams that the Steelers have lost to, the Miami Dolphins. Now, hmm, where were the Dolphins at? 4-5 or 5-4? and four. They've run off four in a row now. And all the teams that the Steelers have lost to have a combined record of 30-15. and 15. If that gives you any indication. Now, I know some people say we've played some pretty poor football. We have. Philadelphia Eagles, awful game. Miami Dolphins, Ben's hurt. Still don't like that as an excuse. Definitely a factor. Same when Pouncey gets hurt, hurts his finger. You play the Ravens, throws off everything. You're on the road against a division opponent that knows you very well. There's been a lot of consistency in certain positions, including the coaching staff, for the most part, up in Baltimore. I don't think they're a great team. They have a very strong schedule ahead. They still have to play the Patriots and the Cowboys, in fact. So this is doable. This is all in the Steelers' hands. They control their own destiny as usual. Are they going to drop a game somewhere? I don't know where. They could probably afford to. I prefer they don't. Obviously, 11-5 and five sounds better than 10-6, and six, but it's still doable and still a record that could win the AFC North. An AFC North where the Steelers still have to play. The only team in professional football that has not won a game this season, they get them twice over the next seven. And it starts Sunday with the first one against the Cleveland Browns. This is where the Steelers turn the ship around. Ladies and gentlemen, agree to disagree? Love hearing the comments online. I know sometimes I get a little chipper. I like to talk back. I love a good argument, a good debate. But sometimes, man, I just go crazy. Like the two-point conversion things, don't lose your you-know-what if Tomlin goes for two on the first touchdown score in this game on Sunday in Cleveland. I wouldn't put it past him. Is that an ego? I think he's very confident. And I think that confidence comes from knowing he has a talented football team. And I think this team wants to right their wrongs, and I hope they do it. I hope they come out. I hope they get a touchdown. I hope they get it early. I hope they go for two, and I hope they get that too. And this has to be a statement game. I hope they don't play down. I hope they don't keep Cleveland in it, and I hope they don't make a mistake that if this is a close game, ends up costing them a loss because this one could be very demoralizing if it were to happen. I'm not going to say that it can or can't, but Vegas tends to be right or wrong or close most of the time. Steelers 8.5 point favorite in this game. Over under was, I think, 45 or 46, which is the same thing it was for the New England Patriots game. But who's going to put up all those points? I don't see it going back and forth both ways. The Browns have problems scoring touchdowns, especially passing. And the Steelers were strong against the run. We saw that to be weak when Cam Hayward was hurt. Now that Cam Hayward's out, we're going to have to see how that holds up as well. Could be different schemes. Could be different sub-packages. We saw the five-linebacker deal last week. I don't know, folks. I don't know. Cautiously optimistic? I think you have to be against an 0-10 team, having seen that the Steelers, the opponents they've lost to, have all, for the most part, been quality football teams in 2016. Until next time, be safe, be good, and I will catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 